Seeing as we're coming into the colder seasons now, especially in Australia, it's actually getting quite cold, which I know sounds crazy, but it's the perfect time for those warmer dishes. So in this one, we're gonna be making Thai pumpkin soup, which is one of my favorites, and it's so easy to make and tastes absolutely incredible. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Alright guys, let's start this off with half a large butternut pumpkin or squash that weighs 1.2 kilos or 2.6 pounds and I've already peeled and removed the pulp. To prepare this, slice it in half to make it easier and safer to work with, then vertically slice each half into quarters. Once that's done, slice the pumpkin or squash into medium to large size strips, to which we can then rotate 90 degrees and dice into medium to large size chunks. Next, here is two medium sized red onions, or you can use one very large one, and with these, we're just going to slice off both ends and slice the onion in half. Make sure to peel off the skins, because you don't want that in your soup, and then with the scraps, these can be safe for a stock. Now with the peeled onions, slice them into large strips, just like we did with the pumpkin or squash, then rotate 90 degrees and dice into medium to large size pieces. For the next ingredients, we're going to need 3 cloves of garlic and 25 grams or 0.8 ounces of peeled ginger, to which we're going to run along the largest side of a grater, just to break these down a little bit. Once that's done, here are the roots of one bunch of coriander or cilantro that have been washed and dried, and all we need to do with this is give it a rough chop, which doesn't have to be super fine, as this will all be blended down later on in the recipe. On the opposite side of those roots is the leaves and stems of the coriander or cilantro and with 25 grams or 0.8 ounces worth, this is going to be roughly chopped just like we did with the roots. I understand some of you don't like coriander or cilantro so this can be left out but it will remove quite a bit of flavour from the final product. Now last but not least, here is one long red chilli which is optional and with this we're just going to slice off the stem, saving it for compost if you wanted to. We can then slice the chilli into nice thin pieces and this is going to be used as a garnish but if you wanted to cook this into the soup, make sure to see the recipe notes in the description below. Now to get this cooking, place a large pot onto your stovetop over a high heat and once hot, pour in 1.5 tablespoons or 30 millilitres of olive oil. Add in the diced red onion for a slight sweet and pungent flavour, the grated garlic for that deep flavour that we all love, and the grated ginger for a delicious floral background note, then give this a good mix through the oil and saute for two minutes, stirring it around regularly. After two minutes, add in the coriander or cilantro root, which adds a fantastic fresh and floral flavor, along with two stalks of fresh lemongrass, which we're going to snap or bruise to allow it to release its citrusy fresh flavor, and continue sauteing for another two minutes, stirring it regularly. Next, we can add in the chopped butternut pumpkin or squash, then give this a really good mix to get it coated in the oil and to form its flavor friendship with the other ingredients, then cook this for five minutes, again stirring it regularly. Also, you can add one teaspoon or five grams of sea salt flakes for a bit of seasoning, along with four fresh kaffir lime leaves, which add the most incredible fresh citrusy and floral flavor and aroma. Now after 5 minutes, pour in 1 liter or 4 cups of vegetable or chicken stock, which the links to those videos will be in the description below. Then give all of this a really good mix, scraping down anything that may be stuck on the side of the pot, also making sure the ingredients are fully covered by the stock, then allow this to come to a boil. Once at a boil, give it another really big mix, then turn the heat down to medium and allow this to simmer away for 30 minutes for the ingredients to break down and become friends. Okay, so this has now been 30 minutes and everything is completely broken down, which is exactly what we want, and that means we can then turn this off the heat. Next, it's a good idea to fish out the lemongrass and kaffir lime leaves as these won't blend well and they've already released their flavor. We can then add in the chopped coriander or cilantro, which is really going to freshen this all up, and now it's time to blend. For this, I'm personally using an immersion blender, which in my opinion is way easier than a regular blender or food processor, plus it's way less mess to clean up. With this, we're just going to blend it until it's really smooth unless you don't like your soup completely smooth, which is fine. I will also say that if you're using a food processor or blender, you will have to wait for this to cool down beforehand, and I'll leave all of those details in the recipe notes in the description below. Now once the soup is smooth, let's add in 400 milliliters or one full can of coconut milk, which is going to make this so smooth and creamy and taste absolutely incredible. Then mix that through until it's fully incorporated and joined in with that flavor friendship. It's now a good time to check this for seasoning and adjust if necessary, mixing it through if you do decide to add any, and this can then be removed from the stovetop. Now to serve this up, I'd recommend using a bowl or a mug, because you don't really want to serve your soup on a plate unless you're into that kind of thing. We can then come through with any coconut milk that may have been stuck in the can or pouring glass to create a nice presentation and added flavor. We can then add on the sliced chili we did earlier if you're using it of course, 
and add on some fresh coriander or cilantro for a nice pop of color and even more fresh flavor, leaving us with this beautiful bowl of soup that I'm going to try not to spill, but how good does that look? And the aroma that's coming from this too is seriously amazing. The last thing left to do now is serve this up with some nice toasted bread, which then allows us to make this all worthwhile, and that is, we can then dig in. So there we have it. This recipe right here serves two to four people, depending on how hungry you are, and to store it, simply place it in the fridge in an airtight container for up to five days, and you can also place it in the freezer in an airtight container for up to six months. To reheat it, simply place it back into a pot over a medium high heat, and just heat it up till it's nice and hot. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button so my channel can be seen by more people. It really does help me out, and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe, and enjoy.